What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to go over replacing elements, which is part of the educational round Code Forces round 102. I haven't been going over Code Forces in a long time and the reason why I'm not doing that is because, I don't know, it's just, it takes a while for me to do, go over some of these problems and I like to explain them. And also, so, so I haven't really been going into like the rounds so much. I haven't been really competing that much, but... I did compete the last time, which was this is this contest was just a few days ago. So yeah, I did solve A and B. So yeah, I'm gonna try to basically if I get into habit of being able to solve A and B for a lot of the problems, then I think I should be able to get to green. You would do A, B, or C, right? A, B, and C. Then I should be able to get to green. Anyway, let's uh, let's do this. So um, basically, give an array of A1 to A n, right? So these are values of the array. And you get to choose three indices, i, j, and k, and then assign the sum of a, a, j is equal to a, k plus a, j, right? A, uh, yeah, a, i is equal to a, j plus a, k. So you basically could pick two different distinct indices, uh, add up the two values of the sum, and then replace it as a, i, right? So like uh, basically pick two, to two different indices, add them up, add two of the numbers up, and then you replace the third one with it, right? So that, that's basically what we're saying here. Um, so now we're asked, can you make AI lower or equal to D using the operation any number of times? So can I make all the values of uh, the indices? I think, yeah, all the values of indices less than or equal to D using the values, the operation any number of times, okay? So um, I basically just brute force this. So you could technically just go through every single value um, every single indices, right? And then uh, add two of the indices up of J and K up and then replace the I. And then you continue doing that until you reach the end. Um, and uh, only replace it if you could replace it and make uh, D as small as possible, right? Like make AI small, less than or equal to D. So if that if AI is less than or equal to D, then you replace it, right? So yeah, um, but you also have to check the initial condition when if all the values are already less than or equal to D, then just print yes. So yeah, in that case, just print yes. So uh, I'll just go over the code because I'll just explain what I did. So yeah, here's what I did. Um, it's not much actually, but uh, here. So I read in the test cases of T, then I read in N and M, and then I read in the values of the array. Um, here, what I'm doing is I'm going to read in all the values of the, the array, and I have I, I have a boolean to make sure they're all less than or equal to m. And if they're all all less than or equal to m, that means we don't have to do any operation, right? So, like, um, let's say we had, let me actually draw this out. So let's say, um, yeah, hold up, hold up. So let's say we had like two, three, one. Right, and then D is equal to four, right? So remember what we're trying to do, the, what the question is asking is that, can we pick two indices? So like, uh, so let's say this is I, this is J and this is K. Can I like pick an I equal to two, uh, pick, pick a random indice I, right? And then add two distinct other distinct indices. So here let J is equal to three and K is equal to one, right? So take, take the values of them Add them up so three plus one is two uh three plus one is four then replace it with replace i with the sum of both of these right that's basically what the question is asking like the sum up pick have make sure you pick two distinct indices sum them up and then re replace your i equal to that right so um because we don't really need if all these values are already less than four we don't yet even have to replace ai ai right we don't have to replace any of the numbers. If all the values are already less than or equal to four, then it really doesn't matter. Like we just have to print it out. So that's what I did here. Over here, um, this Boolean is just going to represent uh, if all the values are less than or equal to M. So what I'm doing is I'm and equals, which is basically just making sure that all these values are true, right? All the values are less than or equal to M. And if they are, then all, all less is going to can remain as true, right? And if they do remain as true, then I just print out yes. That's what I do. 
Okay, um, otherwise I'm going to replace the values, right? I have a function to call it replace. Then I check it again if they're all less, and if they are all, all if they are all less, then I print yes, otherwise I print no. So this is a way to check if they're all less, you know? I basically make sure all the values for each a AI, I make sure it's less than or equal to M, right? And I have a Boolean that just sets that. If it, it, is, if it is less than or equal to M, it will remain true when I do and equals. Okay, so otherwise I replace value. So here I have the replace value, and I just brute forced it. So um, I have the value n, which is the the size of the array, which in this case this is, it will be like three, right? Because there's three numbers, one, two, three, right? Um, yeah, in this case it would be three. Then um, I'm gonna loop through my all my values, and I check if if I if my current value is greater than m. Um, so M is actually the number D. I should have used D in this case. But yeah, in, in my case, I wrote M is, I, I wrote M instead of D. But uh, yeah, we're actually try, trying to check D. But yeah, but yeah, I used M, a variable M. But yeah, um, so if, if if I find a number that's greater than than the value of M, or D in our case, right? If I find a number that's greater than this, this four, I find a number in my array that's greater than this four. What do I do? Um, I loop from the beginning again. Then I find a number that is another number that's less than m. So that's what I do here. And I have to make sure that this index is not the same number as my original one. So here, that's why I have a four int j is equal to zero, and I go through j is less than m. Right. I loop through again, and then uh, j plus plus. So here, this if statement is checking if it's j is not equal to i. So that's the index. Make sure they're different ind indexes, right? Because I can't just pick the same number, add them again, right? They have to be distinct. So that's what this is for. OK, um, I, I make sure that my current number is less than m, because if it's greater than m, then if it uh, if, if the number that I find is greater than m, so like let's say this was, let's say this was 4, right? I don't want to replace 4 plus 3. Right, because I don't want to replace. Um, actually, this is a bad example. Um, let's say this was five. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's say this was. Uh, let's say this was five. And uh, let's say my m is equal to four. Right. If I find a number that's greater, so five. Um, and I find another number that's greater, so like. Uh, Actually, let's say this was, let's say this was five. So if I find a number that's greater and another number that's, that's greater, and I, I, I try to replace this, I don't want to replace it with a number that's also greater, right? I think greater than my M. Because what I'm trying to do is make them all less than or equal to M. So if I find a number that's greater, I don't want to replace, sum them up and replace them. So yeah, that's why I have that. So in the here, I make sure that a of j is less than m. Okay, so once I find another number that's less than m, I loop again from the beginning, and I make sure that I find uh, a last number that's less than m. So this last number has to be less than m, right? I find another number that's n not the same thing as the original first two, and I make sure it's less than m also, a of k, and right? that's my k. And I have to make sure all of them are not the same indexes because they have to be different numbers. Okay. Then what I do is I check if the sum of my both of these two numbers I just found is less than or equal to m. And if it is, then I just replace my a of i is equal to a a of k plus a of j. So I just replace them. Okay. Um, I have a boolean that is just uh, finished, and this finished is just to end the loop when I'm done. So if I do replace this, what I want to do is break out of this the second loop of finding the second number, right? But I want to continue going on the first loop because this first loop is the, the loop that is replacing all of the original numbers, right? Because I want to replace every single number to see if I could replace them with a number that's less than or equal to m, right? So that's why I, I break, I have a finished for the second loop that breaks out of the second loop. So in this case, um, originally I say finish is false. 
then I do this loop for loop and I check if it's not finished, right? If it's not finished. So in the end I do, if I did re replace it, I say finish is equal to true and then I break. So that breaks out of the second uh, break. This breaks out of the first loop. And because I say finish equals the true, the second loop is going to be finished, right? Because th this true finish is true now and not true is false. So this second loop is done. So this, this second loop is done. And then it'll go to the original first loop and it tries to replace the rest of the numbers of that. So yeah, that's my solution. Um, I think their solution, I think they, they, they use sorting. And I think you could do that and that might be a better way, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, let's see, because I just brute forced it. Okay, let's look at theirs. Oh wow, so since they're all positive, AI plus AJ is gonna be greater than max AI J AJ. That means you can't make the first and second numbers lower than all their RDI. If we choose any other number replaced, we can't make them less than, make them bigger. As for that means we just choose each element either not to change it or make it equal to MN plus MM. So just to be able to make that all, we just have to check if it's less than equal to D. Well, that's kind of what I did. M plus N less than equal to D. Okay. We could do it by sorting our array in decreasing order and checking that either AI plus A2 is less than or equal to D. I mean, yeah, you could do that, I guess. Oh, wow. All you have to do is just sort it. Sort and check if it's less than or equal to D. A0 plus A1 is less than or equal to D. Well, the last one is less than or equal to D. Huh. That's cool to know. But yeah, what I did was I just brute forced it. Ray comp subscribe. I uh, hope you guys enjoy my explanation. Basically, I just took two numbers and replaced it, and then I break out of it. it uh, it's My way is not that difficult to understand. Um, I could explain it again, but yeah. Just... I'll just explain it again. So go loop through it. EI. Um, if you find a number that's greater than the M, the value of M that they want, uh, then what I do is I create an, I loop through it again, find a J that's not equal to I, and I make sure that A of J is less than M. If it is less than M, I loop through again from the beginning, and I find another, another number that A, uh, K is not equal to J and K is not equal to I. Make sure they're all distinct and they're also less than M. And then if they are, then I add them up and I check if it's less than or equal to M. And if it is, then I set it, I replace it, and then I finish is true and I break. So yeah. I hope you guys enjoy this video. It's not that long. Plus, uh, I didn't really feel like that much editing today because I have a lot of work I have to do. But yeah, rate, comment, subscribe. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll check you guys later. Peace.